So, Allison, what's up? Well, bro, we just had a heck of a fright. On Tuesday, the Dow dropped 800 points, the most since February. Do you remember that horrible day in February? I do remember that horrible day. Yes. Do you really? Yeah, yeah, I do. Oh, OK. Uh, I don't. <laughs> anyway, because this is being taped in the past and you, dear listener, are in the future, I can't even begin to fathom what calamity has hence ensued. Cats and dogs living together, total <laughs> anarchy. But should we be surprised? After all, it is October, which means the October effect is in full force. Dun, dun, dun. Yes, the October effect. <laughs> Have we talked about this on the show before? I don't know, but I will say that like one of the first three articles I wrote for The Motley Fool back in 1999 was on this very topic. But let's hear your take on it. <laughs> here's, my, here's my hot take on the October effect. Do you remember whether it's a real thing or not? Because that's what we're going to talk about. Uh, well, I know that some of the worst days for the stock market have happened in October. Oh, have they? So here we go. The October effect is the idea that October is just a particularly bad month for the stock market. It's also known as the Mark Twain effect. Did you know that? I didn't know that. It comes from the line in Mark Twain's Puddinghead Wilson, which means I get to break out my Southern lawyer voice. Oh, I can't wait. October. This is one of the peculiarly dangerous months to speculate in stocks. The others are July, January, September, April, November, May, March, June, December, August, and February. Very good. Thank very you. Good. <laughs> so, yeah, basically, October is the word particularly dangerous to speculate in stocks, as is every other month in the year. Right. So, that's why they call, also call it the Mark Twain effect. But seriously, let's look at October. The panic of 1907 happened in October. I don't remember that one. That was well. a thing. <laughs> Black Thursday and both Black Mondays happened in October in 1929 and 1987. The 2008 Great Recession kicked off in October. According to Zero Hedge, five out of the 10 worst days in the market happened in October. Hmm. But downturns in 1987, 1990, 2001, and 2002 all bottomed out in October. In fact, the same day that the market just fell 800 points in October was the anniversary of when the Dow Jones bottomed out in 2002, having fallen 38.75% from its 2000 highs. Hmm. Investopedia says that from a historical perspective, October has marked the end of more bear markets than it has acted as the beginning. So, maybe October means it's actually a good thing to celebrate. Maybe we should take a look at some of the other months, like say September, which is worse. It is September is actually statistically the worst month yep. for investors, according to many researchers, including Yardeni Research. September has had 47 down months compared to 39 up months since 1928, and on average, investors lose one percent in September, and the average monthly return in October is 0. 0.4. Uh, the best month on average, you want to guess? It's December, I think. December or January. It's actually July. July. Oh, duh. no! I knew it. July is at one point <laughs> six on average, and December, you're right, is one point four. Right. So there's a, there's an old adage called "sell in May and go away," um, where you're supposed to stay out of the market for a certain number of months. You do miss July, but you. The question was, okay, if I sell in May, when do I get back do in I get the back market? In? Yeah, yeah. It was often Halloween. Like you get back in, uh, uh, yes. Okay. The, 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 it actually has some mixed results, but because you miss some of those really bad markets, sell and mango away looked pretty good, depending on what year you're looking at. No. All right, well, let's dig into some research about whether October effect is just a silly superstition or not. Because a lot of people will say that this is whatever. Now, some will go so far as to say, yeah, there's something there, but it's mostly a self fulfilling prophecy. So we say it's an adage, and so people actually follow it. Therefore, People are investing, therefore the markets do fall. Um, I did see an article in the BBC where uh, they spoke with Lily Fang. She's a professor at, Mass at MIT, and she blames uh, the fact that all of us are coming off of our summer highs, and when reality of fall sets in, our bubbles burst. Essentially, all of the people who spend their time obsessing over the markets go on holiday over the summer. And so, they are delaying their reaction to market uncertainty until they get back to work in September. And then they're like, oh, that's right! I, while I was on the beach <laughs> drinking Mai Tais, everything's awful now. <laughs> right? And so, it um, so, her and her colleagues uh, have tested their thesis by looking at differences in school holidays in 47 countries. And they found that the returns are, on average, 1% lower in the months after major school holidays. Their basic conclusion is that there's some market inefficiency because many professional investors are just plain absent from the market and huh. 
on a yacht, I assume. I don't know what they do with their time. All right, writing for the Wall Street Journal, Jason Zweig blames the availability bias, and that's human tendency to judge how likely an event is by how easily we can recall vivid examples of it. So, the horrific losses of October 20, 2008 are hard to forget. Uh, any day with the word black in front of it is kind of hard to forget. Whereas the milder gains of 7% in October of 2015 and 11% in 2011 are hard to remember. Uh, Zweig also pointed to research that fall just generally makes us sadder and less optimistic. So, average returns on U.S. Treasuries appear to be higher in fall than in spring, suggesting that investors are seeking safety in darker months. Um, stock analysts' earnings forecasts are less optimistic in fall and winter than they huh. are in summer and spring. So, all that's interesting, but what should we do about it, whether there is an effect or not? I'm going to go to Warren Buffett for his advice. Sounds good to me. Sounds like a good guy. Now, all of these, I'm going to offer some of his advice, all of which Molly Full Answers listeners have heard before. But it's worth reminding you of because, again, you're in the future and I have no idea what hellscape of <laughs> financial disintegration you are currently living in five days from the taping of this episode. It could be bad, Rick. We don't know. All right. So, first piece of Warren Buffett advice is that the most important quality for an investor is temperament, not intellect. So, we here at The Motley Fool often preach about how you need to be able to ride out the storm and keep calm and carry on and all that good stuff. And if an 800 point drop in the Dow is keeping you from sleeping, well, then maybe you need to pull back your exposure there in the market. Did I get that advice right? That's I feel pretty like good. I'm pretty much just. That's pretty good. All right. And of course, there's Warren Buffett's advice of being fearful when others are greedy and to be greedy only when others are fearful. We here at Motley Fool Answers don't necessarily like the idea of timing the market, but I know there are some analysts here at the Motley Fool who maybe have stocks on their watch list that wouldn't mind getting it a little bit on sale. And my final piece of Warren Buffett advice is that the stock market is a device for transferring money from the impatient to the patient. By which we mean, of course, that we don't want you to be buying and selling stocks in all oh, within the month of October, and the patient investor holds on for the long term because, after all, in the long term, the stock market tends to go up and to the right, which we like. That's right. Do you want to offer any other additional advice? No. Okay. <laughs> so let's go back to that Puddinghead Wilson quote: "October that is one of the peculiarly dangerous months to speculate in stocks." So yeah, I would agree. It's always kind of a bad month to speculate in stocks uh, and make, by which I mean, of course, making short term bets and day trading. But long term, bottoms up investing in companies you believe in, well, that's always in season. And that, bro, is what's up. 